When we think of and thank the people in our community who face danger daily to keep society up and running, we'll often mention police and firefighters. Don't often mention process servers. Yet they knock on Noor's doors knowing that anger, if not danger, awaits. For a man named Tom Mills, he was sent to serve a $150 collections notice against a Denver sheriff's deputy who had a gun. Tom had a camera. Our Anastasia Bolton picks things up from there. I've been process serving about 25 years. A different day, a different place, every time. That's what Tom Mills liked about his job. Almost all the stuff we do are civil paperwork, so it's usually never, usually never uh, dangerous. Uh, uh, you don't have people very upset with you. It's usually stuff they're expecting, stuff like that. Usually. Yeah. But even Tom's sense of adventure has limits. He found that out two weeks ago in Commerce City. Yes, hi. Tom always records video when he serves people. This time, he had to knock twice. Fred Cardone? No, them. No, I'm just here for the dogs. What's your name? Come back in John. there. John? Yeah. Thanks, John. Been doing it a long time. You kind of catch on when somebody's lying to you about something. Tom looked up Brett Carbone on Facebook. He was at the right house. He had the right guy. He went back to knock again. Uh, $150 was all he was being uh, served for. Brett, get off my property right now. Go. Cool. I'm going to serve you. You're going to put that down and get off my property. All right. Not be doing holding a gun what? up to me. This is my property. I can do what I want. Being a Marine, you'd think you'd be trained to have somebody hold a gun to you and you'd be not scared. And it scared the bejeebies out of me. I really felt I was going to die. I've had people upset where they yell at you, they call you names. Uh, uh, but on the physical part of bringing up a gun and holding it to you, I've never experienced that in the 20, last 25 years. Never. A different day, a different place every time is nice, yes. but... I don't like going up to the houses in the afternoons and evenings anymore. Tom's thinking of quitting. Life of adventure has limits. I don't understand what he was thinking by pulling the gun. For next, I'm Anastasia Bolton. Deputy Carbone's been on leave with pay from that job he's had since early last year. He's now looking at a felony menacing charge. He's not talking, neither is his attorney. Democratic Congresswoman Diana DeGette of Denver is adding her voice to the Me Too movement, women who say that they were victims of sexual harassment at work. And if I asked you to guess which member of Congress she is accusing of disgusting behavior, if you know politics, you probably know his name. He's even earned the nickname Filthy. I was in an elevator and then Congressman Bob Filner tried to pin me to the door of the elevator and kiss me, and I pushed him away. Bob Filner, fellow Democrat, went on to be the mayor of San Diego, where his continued vile behavior around women earned him the nickname Filthy Filner and led to him resigning in disgrace four years ago. 22 Coloradans hold freshly signed pardons from the governor. Not famous faces, not scandalous cases. Everyday folks who did wrong, did time, and have done right since. The governor's clemency letters all begin and end alike. In between are 22 individual stories of redemption. Here's just a brief sampling. Dear Ms. Bright, Mr. Casper, Ms. Sagel, Mr. Roberts, Ms. Birch, Mr. Pope, many people with criminal histories desire a second chance, and you have earned one. You have proven yourself a valuable and loyal employee at City a Market. Diesel mechanic. As a vice president of Bank of America, you put yourself through the police academy. You rescued a mother and two children from a vehicle that had crashed on the highway. Others who have experienced circumstances similar to yours will look to you for guidance and inspiration. Show them how it's done. Good luck to you. Sincerely, John W. Hickenlooper, Governor. Uber has been hit with a record $8.9 million fine from Colorado regulators for 57 Uber drivers who never should have been giving you a ride around town. If you had a reckless Uber driver, maybe you rode with one of the 17 who had major moving violations on their records. If you had an Uber driver who kept talking about second chances, maybe it was one of the 12 convicted felons. If you had an Uber driver who seemed relieved when the car started, maybe he was one of the three with a DUI who needed to blow into one of those interlock device thingies to operate a vehicle. 
And if you had an Uber driver who leaned back and said, where are you escaping to today? Maybe it was the escapee from the state prison system who went on to drive for Uber in Colorado. Uber referred to the issues as just a process error. Colorado Mills Mall reopens tomorrow. It had 2.7 million reasons to do so as soon as possible. That's how much sales tax revenue city council was told that it lost because of the mall's closure. Our Marshall Zellinger was led inside today to see the parts of the mall that the mall wants you to see. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm delighted to welcome you to the reopening of Colorado Mills. We've been waiting for this day for over six months. This is the Colorado Mills they want you to see, which is the same Colorado Mills you'll be allowed to see tomorrow. I think it's really fitting that we're actually reopening the week of Thanksgiving. We couldn't be more excited because we're so grateful. But gosh, about 100 stores will be open ahead of Black Friday, though some are still wiping off the dust. Colorado Mills was badly damaged by the May 8th hailstorm that destroyed the 21 football field long roof, which is still being repaired today, at times a little too noticeably. I'm so excited though today to talk to you about our recovery. And as you look around, you can see that we're a work in progress. But we are ready to go, ready to open. And Miley Medina owns a chai cafe in the mall and admitted to us she had to do some childlike cleaning to be ready for the reopening. If I'm being completely honest, about 8 o'clock last night, my staff and I, we were like little kids that were supposed to be cleaning their bedroom. And then you hear your mom coming up the stairs and you're shoving everything under your bed. <laughs> So we made it look nice and we're about there and we're ready to open tomorrow. If you thought parking in a mall during the holidays is tough enough, we found dozens of spots filled with construction materials and dumpsters, but no target rock. So if you were to come back tomorrow, you would see even more parking open than you experienced today. For next, I'm Marshall Zellinger. You might have noticed that the mall is lacking a few amenities like carpet. Expect a special 2018 carpet rollout. We're told construction will continue only outside shopping hours. This is not an earthquake. It is video from Northern Colorado today. We'll ask our Broncos insider one of those questions you're not supposed to ask about the Broncos. Maybe the team needs to simplify its game plan. Picture play calling. I have a few play suggestions next. Tell me that this video is out of California and I would say that we're witnessing a monster earthquake. But knowing that this is actually northern Colorado today, well then we all know it's just the famous wind blowing up there. So strong it closed I-25 for almost two hours this afternoon. Kind of surprised we didn't lose one of the cameras whipping around in the wind up near the Wyoming border. I'm meteorologist Kathy Sabin. Those gusty winds signaling the arrival of a cool front that will bring a little blast of mountain snow, three to six inches of snow to freshen up the snowpack in time for the holiday. Almost 70 in the city today. will be 20 degrees cooler tomorrow. Compliments of that front, which may bring enough moisture for an isolated rain shower in Denver between 5 a.m. and 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. And then we clear out and warm right back up again. Even with accumulating snow above 9,000 feet, National Weather Service has not posted any advisories for traffic travel on I-70. 32, partly cloudy, still windy along the foothills tonight. Tomorrow, temperatures a little cooler, seasonal. You'll feel the change, though, ahead of a nice warming trend that will see holiday forecast high temperatures way above average in the low 70s for Thursday and for Friday. A dry weekend coming up as well. And the clouds the last few days have been spectacular, Kyle. Kathy, thanks. It's a sign that the Broncos are facing an uncertain future these days. Next viewer, Devin Green, spotted some Sweet deals on Trevor Simeon jerseys up at the Shields in Johnstown. Broncos offensive corner Mike McCoy was fired this morning. The team said it wanted a simpler play calling scheme, which raises an awkward question for our Broncos insider Mike Kliss. Did Mike McCoy just get fired because Paxton Lynch can't learn his playbook? 
I think it was more because Trevor Simeon and then Brock Osweiler were losing games the same way. First, Simeon was playing okay except for turnovers. Then Brock Osweiler, okay except for turnovers. Those turnovers were losing the game. Their inefficiency in the passing game is what Vance Joseph explained as a reason why he fired Mike McCoy. Now, I do think it's uh, not a coincidence that they're making this change to Bill Musgrave who's going to narrow down that playbook quite a bit. It's gonna, he's going to simplify things, just as we do think Paxton Lynch will become the starting quarterback this week in the black hole. So there is a little bit of mesh there. Musgrave coming in to simplify the offense, Paxton Lynch coming in to play quarterback. So there is a correlation, but not necessarily that's why Mike McCoy got fired. He got fired because of the performances or lack thereof of the quarterbacks that have played. Now listen, here at Next, we want to be part of the solution for the Broncos. Some college football teams simplify the game for the quarterback by calling the plays from the sideline, using these enormous posters with memorable images. The next team thinks picture play calling could work for the Broncos. A picture of the DIA tent roof when they want to go to the air. A picture of Casa Bonita for the runs to call for a sweep. The 2007 World Series Rockies. A picture of a fugly building in Denver to signal a bootleg. A Del Arakawa for an up and out. A Donna Lynn for governor sign for a handoff. A marijuana leaf for a drag route. Blucifer for a flea flicker. Brandon Marshall for a kneel down. The A-line for a stop and go route, ski traffic for a trap play, and to call a Hail Mary, the Broncos might as well use a picture of Paxton Lynch. Look on the bright side though. The Rockies announced their spring training schedule today, only three months till they play ball down in Scottsdale. Jeremy Hohola's latest reporting takes him inside a homeless shelter. It's actually a reminder of something from his past. How'd your Monday go? Better than the guy who tried and failed to demolish a silo in Colorado? And speaking of fails, life is not Pinterest perfect, Facebook fantastic, Instagram immaculate. No, share your Thanksgiving fails. We'll share the best of the worst next. Each night, about 1,500 of our neighbors use Denver's homeless shelters. But a lot of people who need them avoid them. As part of a special report tonight, Jeremy Hohola spent the night in a shelter, an assignment that reminds him of one of his first pieces of journalism. I've seen some kids throw bottles and cans at these people or yell and call names. Anyway, after seeing so many people on the streets, I wanted to find out what it was like. I wanted to know what it was like to have people look upon you as if you were a reject of society. Here in my hands is one of the first pieces of journalism I ever did. And it happened a long time ago, way back in 1996 when I was 17 years old. Um, I think what stands out to me is the spelling and the grammatical, mis grammatical mistakes I had in this article. <laughs> I uh, decided for my high school newspaper to spend the night in a homeless shelter and write about the experience. So that's what I did. I spent the night in a homeless shelter and you see, that's a picture of me right there. Skinny Jeremy Hohola, many years ago, age 17. I was too used to a mattress upon my back. The hard concrete below seemed to punch me every time I moved around and it was also cold. Coughs and sneezes incessantly cut through the blackness. You know, I can get a little taste of it, but I don't think anybody can really know what it's like uh, to be homeless until you become homeless. You know, one of the reasons why I did stay in the shelter again was to give our viewers a small, you know, view, a small glimpse of what it's like when you don't have a home and what it's like where you do have to rely on the shelter system. All right, I think that's it for me. Uh, I walked out of the shelter about five o'clock this morning. So my stay in a homeless shelter is just a very small part of tonight's story into why people choose to avoid shelters altogether. We surveyed informally 100 homeless people around Denver to listen to their concerns and their reasons. And I think Kyle, a lot of people will actually watch her story and learn something about why people choose the streets over shelters tonight.
like yeah. so many homelessness issues, I think yeah. a lot of people have preconceptions, yes. and a lot of people say, oh, this is what's going on, but it's really complex. Yeah, and there's lots of answers, but there's also a pattern of answers that we see, so we'll present that tonight at 10. All right, Jeremy, thank you. Sure. We do not cover a whole lot of uh, bike thefts here on Next. But you remember that one that happened to the Pitkin County Sheriff himself? A bike that was a gift to his family from Lance Armstrong? The bike that prompted the sheriff to come on next and offer a salty reminder to himself and the rest of us? Um, I mean, if someone had called you or your sheriff's department and said, hey, my, Lance, my bike that Lance Armstrong gave me was stolen and like we, we left it on the porch and it wasn't locked up, what would your response be? You should lock your <laughs> 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 That's what I would say. <laughs> well, <laughs> lucky for the sheriff, they found his blank. <laughs> Bike's tough to miss. Ranger with Pickin County Open Space recently found it. It was chained to a tree in some open space on the outskirts of Aspen. The bike has now been returned to the sheriff's office, where I guarantee it is locked up tonight. Every newscast in America is going to show you the demolition of the Georgia Dome in Atlanta today. Only next... We'll show you the demolition of the Empire Mine Silo in Craig in northwest Colorado. Nope. Nope. Oh. Oh no. Wait, wait, wait. Just wait. Just, just maybe like everybody just like stomp your feet a little bit. Just like stomp your feet. No. No. Just bl blow on it. <laughs> just blow on it a little. No, no, no. It's not coming down. <laughs> this was a fail. Uh, they're going to try to demolish it later. Peabody Energy says they will, uh, they'll be using remote equipment this second time around. It's a good try, guys. We're bringing back a Thanksgiving tradition here on Next. Your Thanksgiving fails, but not, how we, not before we update you on the true star of the holiday, Kevin the Turkey. Kevin the turkey is going to have a good Thanksgiving, mostly because he's not going to get eaten. Uh, Kevin has been officially released into the wild. Colorado Parks and Wildlife shared this video with us. You remember Kevin the turkey, uh, the turkey that lived near the King Supers parking lot, C-470 in Quebec for years. People knew this turkey. They saw it all the time. But Kevin was nasty. I mean, Kevin went after people in their cars. He blocked traffic. He wanted to be in the wild. So uh, uh, CBW grabbed him. They waited until turkey hunting season was over because, man, would that have been a story if they just let him go and then, okay. But anyway, there's Kevin. Look at that. You see that? It was a little frolic. Kevin is now frolicking in the wild. They say he's doing well considering that we have seen photos of him eating people food, including Doritos, in that parking lot. It's a sign. The Halloween is over, people. It's over. Just, just let it go. Next viewer named Jim spotted this at the Walgreens in Littleton. There's, there is so much sad right here. Just take it in, people. Pumpkin, pal. 19 cents. Okay, 19 cents for the Halloween pumpkin. That's a good deal. But again, that's sad. Pumpkin spelled wrong. Pale is spelled wrong. There's just, just buy them, people. Just put Halloween out of its misery. Send us the signs you see. Hashtag hey next. This Thanksgiving and every holiday, it's the thought that counts. At least that's how we rationalize our hilarious holiday fails. Kroger Denning's sister put the turkey on the car roof. Lost the lid on the interstate, but the bird made it to Thornton. Holly Ingram L. Jamal says they started with cocktails, put the turkey in the oven and forgot to turn it on. Beth Arvidsson Ludke didn't follow the high altitude pecan pie recipe, so she made soup. We're thankful that you share your holiday fails using the hashtag HeyNext or email next at 9news.com. We're going to clear things up and feedback tonight. Jack says, did you say fugly? I did. Dave says, did you say Casa Bonita for the runs? I did. And Jay writes, hey, dude, if you think you're going to look thinner by having your hair cut, sorry. I'll have you know I lost half a pound when they cut my hair, Jay. I weighed myself, and I will see you next time. <laughs>